I didn't want to get copyright struck there, but you get my point. Magic is all around us. I'm not talking about wizards. I'm talking about sorcerers. You're a wizard, Harry. Doctor Strange is the most powerful sorcerer over in this universe. Well, Doctor Fate is the most powerful sorcerer in this universe. So let's analyze their strengths and weaknesses, their powers and abilities. Most importantly, their magic to figure out who'd win in a fight. Cue the music. What's up guys, I'm Daniel and this is Danko. We do fight breakdowns like this one every week plus the occasional ranking video or things like that. So if that seems interesting to you, well, sit back and enjoy the video. Hit that like button. If you want to, well, hit the subscribe button while you're at it. Also, just a disclaimer right off the bat, spoilers ahead for Black Adam. Dormammu, I've come to bargain. Dr. Stephen Strange was a brilliant, an insanely egotistical neurosurgeon who prided himself on his perfect record. But this all changed when he was in a brutal car crash, causing irreparable nerve damage to his hands, effectively ending his career as a surgeon. He tried everything he could to get his life back, but when Western medicine failed him, he tried the more mystical route. That's when the Ancient One was able to open his eyes, introducing him to the world of magic, where he became a master of the mystic arts. Calling himself Doctor Strange, he didn't get a cool superhero name. I'm Peter, by the way. Doctor Strange. Oh, you're using your made-up names. Um, I'm Spider-Man, then. He became the master of the New York Sanctum, an Earth's protector against all interdimensional threats. So, being a master of the mystic arts, Doctor Strange's greatest ability is really his knowledge and all the versatility that comes along with it. It's all the many, many, many spells he has memorized. Doctor Strange is a literal genius with a photographic memory, which is what helped him earn his PhD and MD simultaneously. Also, it allowed him to perform some insanely advanced spells after training for less than a year. He managed to pick up and master many of the Order's spells faster than anybody else, and so he was given access to the deeper sections of the library, usually only reserved for master level sorcerers. It got to the point where he could pull off spells from the Book of Castiliostro, from the Ancient One's private collection, and was said to have been too advanced for anybody but the Sorcerer's Supreme herself. Mordo said that Strange had an inherent talent for the mystic arts. The Ancient One said that he was the best of us before he even started training. And then you gotta remember, Dr. Strange spent essentially an infinite period of time trapped in that time loop with Dormammu, where all the while he acquired an even greater mastery over his craft. So with all that versatility and knowledge, what all can Doctor Strange do? Well, give him enough time, essentially anything, to the point where he can wipe the minds of everyone on Earth, or open up portals and rifts to other dimensions. The Ancient One did say that he was going to become the best of us. He can cast all sorts of spells with his eldritch magic, basically a form of energy and light, and he can use it to create physical objects forming magical weapons and shields. Shields that can block attacks from Dormammu and block attacks from Thanos, and even survive a crash landing in alien spaceships on alien planets. He's also always forming magical energy weapons. Whips just happen to be his favorite, so those are his go-to, but he'll also create swords and axes and even giant freaking buzz saws. He can open up portals wherever he wants, even other dimensions. So that's just perfect for a surprise Spider-Man attack. He can fire out energy blasts and even turn it around and absorb energy. He can summon demons and monsters to help him in fights, create little buddies to come help him. And he can create copies of himself, 
something that we'll definitely be talking about later because that's something that Dr. Fate loves to do. He's got telekinesis. He's able to control things and throw them all around, can conjure and transmute objects, create fire, open up like portals to hell, travel across dimensions, so much. He can separate his soul from his body, allowing his body to just wander around in the astral plane. And he can do this to other people too, literally throwing their soul out of their body. He can also tap into mirror dimension magic, even have whole fights and warp reality inside the mirror dimension, where he has essentially complete and total control. There really seems to be absolutely no limit to what Doctor Strange can do. Even raise the dead and control spirits and have musical fights, as cheesy and corny as that might be. Seriously, what can't this guy do? You may regret that. He brought you face to face with the master of the mystic arts. Kent Nelson is one of the founding members of the Justice Society. And when he puts on the mystical helmet of fate, well, he can transform into the magical sorcerer Dr. Fate, servant of the Lords of Order. After living in isolation for many years in the Tower of Fate, looking for inner peace, Fate received a vision of Black Adam killing all of the Justice Society. So Fate rejoined the team to go and stop Black Adam, determined to not let his vision of the future become a reality. Using the Helmet of Fate, Kent Nelson is able to receive immense magical powers from Naboo, a Lord of Order and a being who's millions of years old. He can now defend the world from magical threats as Dr. Fate. Now he's been practicing magic for a hundred years, so by this point he definitely knows what he's doing. He can teleport in an instant, traveling anywhere that he wants and it can also project his astral form from his body, sending it to talk to Black Adam in China or freeing Black Adam from the Argus prison in Russia, all while he's still in conduct. He can create massive and detailed illusions, fire out beams and bolts of magical energy and create energy constructs, like when he was able to pierce through Black Adam and seriously hurt him. He did the same thing with Sabak too, Dr. Fate is also able to create energy shields, and some seriously powerful ones at that. They can block attacks from Black Adam, even block the big giant explosions that he creates when he gets a bit too angry. And these are almost passive shields too. Dr. Fate created a shield that was powerful enough to hold back the other members of the JSA and keep that shield up all while he was still fighting Sabak. And freeing Black Adam at the same time. Dr. Fate also loves to duplicate and create clone copies of himself, who basically have all the same abilities but are just made out of like crystals. And these clones are powerful enough to hold back Black Adam and hold back Sabak. I think you'll find our will equal to yours. So, who wins here? Well, I think it's obvious that Doctor Strange has more hacks and versatility. I think that's obvious. He's been in like four movies. Doctor Fate has been in one. We've seen Doctor Fate in like two fights. It's obvious that we're just going to be seeing more stuff from Strange. And in universe, well, Doctor Strange is a genius who learned literally all that Kamartage had to teach him then spent a few lifetimes in the Dark Dimension with Dormammu, practicing and training all of it. He was destined to be the best sorcerer out there, and he lived up to it. So that means that Strange just has so many things in his back pocket that he can pull out in the fight, and all that versatility and knowledge does give him a leg up over Dr. Fate. But... Even if Dr. Fate just has his energy crosses and clone copies, even if that's all he has, well, he could still win. Versatility isn't everything, especially when Fate has the more powerful magic. Dr. Fate has energy attacks that were able to injure Black Adam and Sabak, two of the most powerful people in the DCEU. Black Adam is an equal to Superman, 
He's almost scaling directly compared to him. And Sabak and Black Adam are powerful enough to fight against each other, so they should scale to each other too. And Fate is able to injure both of them with his energy constructs. Doctor Strange has never shown us this much power with his attacks. He was never able to hurt Thanos that way. He was never able to hurt Scarlet Witch that way. And if he gets pierced with the construct too, well, I think that's probably a one shot. If it has Black Adam screaming out, it's gotta do the same to Doc Strange, right? So yeah, even if Doctor Strange has shown us more versatile magic, Fate still has magic here that can let him win. That's for sure. Then I think Doctor Fate is physically more impressive, which might not sound like it plays too big of a deal in a magic fight, but it's actually kinda important here. Yeah, Fate is stronger, he's tougher, and he's faster. Now, their shields are about the same. Doctor Fate can block lightning from Black Adam and giant explosions, while Doctor Strange can block Power Stone Blast from Thanos. And while it might seem way more impressive to block Power Stone Blast, these aren't your typical old planet destroying Power Stone Blast. No, these are Power Stone Blasts that Iron Man can block, that Star Lord and Nebula can take and survive. Still impressive but not really any more impressive than Black Adam's lightning. The kicker here is that Doctor Strange can actually be knocked out if you're able to hit his body. Doctor Fate took an attack from Black Adam without a shield and was smashed into a building and wasn't knocked out. Fate is tougher. Doctor Fate is also faster. Now, yeah, Strange is fast enough to block some attacks and dodge around others, but Doctor Fate is fast enough to keep up with Black Adam and dodge and block his lightning. That's way more impressive than anything Strange has ever blocked or dodged. Lastly, Fate is stronger. I mean, he's strong enough to send his clone copies in there and restrain Black Adam and hold back Sabacc. And yeah, sure, Strange did the same thing, created a hundred copies of himself and held back Thanos. But sending in like six copies of yourself and holding back Black Adam versus a hundred copies of yourself holding back Thanos? Yeah, holding back Black Adam with just a few is way more impressive. And while Strange just did this once, this is actually just a go-to tactic for Dr. Fate. Now, why does that matter? Well, because casting spells for Dr. Strange usually involves a lot of hand waving and moving around and so he can be taken out be able to hold him back ebony maul did that was able to beat him spider-man did it too and was able to beat him and if it's a common tactic for fate to create copies of himself and swarm enemies well it's not gonna go too well for dr strange he's gonna be restrained he's gonna be held back He's not going to be able to wave his arms around and cast magic spells. Because if Fate can hold back Black Adam, he can hold back Doctor Strange easy. Then, giant construct down from the sky and the fight is all over. Doctor Strange entered into the MCU so strong and powerful. He was able to hold off Dormammu and use his brain and creativity to hold off a planetary destroying threat. He could fight on his own against Thanos with four Infinity Stones. Four Infinity Stones! He was building up to be a god among men. But that's just completely fallen off since then. Because Ebony Maul was able to beat up on him. Spider-Man was able to beat him in the mirror dimension, just leave him trapped there. And Strange has a massive home advantage in the mirror dimension. Doctor Strange was even having a tough fight against the street level monster Darkantius. So he's definitely been kind of slipping as of late. On top of that, while Doctor Fate is probably right there on par with Strange in terms of magic and everything, Fate just fights in a way that has Strange screwed. Strange has to move his arms around in order to cast spells and fight. And Fate's go-to tactic 
managed to send in swarms of himself and hold his enemies down. On top of that, you've got the energy constructs that can hurt Black Adam and Sabak. Yeah, it's surprisingly all over here. Didn't really see this one coming, but I think Dr. Fate takes it. Dr. Fate wins. But what do y'all think? Sound off in the comments down below. I know you're going to have thoughts and feelings on this one for sure. And if you stuck around this long and made it to the end of the video, that's amazing. Thank you so much for watching and for supporting us. And if you want to go subscribe, well, go subscribe. You'll get to see more videos like this one every single week. And I'll see y'all next time.